Hello and welcome to Chill Game Build, the channel where you come to chill and where I play video games, build Lego and repair gadgets. This is Series 2, Episode 3 of my Build and Review series. In the last episode, I built this. Set 75322, the Hoth AT-ST. And in this episode, I'll build and review this. Set 3, Triple One Three, the Race Car Transporter from the Lego Creator 3-in-1 theme. Before I begin, I will explain how this video has been broken down into four sections. Firstly, I will show you some details about the set and my first impressions in brief. Then you can see a quick time lapse of the build process. We will then check out some web reviews before I finally share my own opinions and rate this set. So make yourself comfortable and enjoy the video. Here are the official details on the lego.com website for set 3113, the race car transporter. This set was released on the 1st of January 2021 and recently retired on the 31st of December 2022. It retailed for £21.99 here in the UK. It contains 328 pieces which works out at 6.7 pence per piece. And this set has an age rating of 7 years and up. The following details are accurate as of time of recording. According to Brickset.com there is one piece that is unique to this set. And it is this modified 1x2 plate with spoiler in dark green. And you get a pair of those. The 3x6 right and left angle plates are also uncommon featuring in only one and two other sets respectively. And before I build, here are my first impressions based on the images from the lego.com website. Starting off with this one, I must say it looks very colourful, it's a colourful set. We've got bright greens, blues and reds that really stand out and it's very eye-catching. Also like this grill over here for the front of the truck, definitely something different. And I must say it looks quite polished, so there's not too many studs on this. A lot of smooth edges, which is really nice, especially for the scale. So this is the B model, rain truck, and yeah, it looks quite nice, looks quite good too. Although these wing mirrors look quite large. But yeah, it looks like it uses quite a lot of the pieces and a few blue piece is there to represent something it's picking up. Nice. And the third model, the C model, is the mini tugboat. And looks like there's not as many pieces used for this build. But it still looks really good actually. Quite smooth again, not too many studs and yeah, a bit of sideways building techniques there that will be interesting to put together. Nice. So there's a truck again with a bit of articulation on the trailer. Nice angle that. Let's go back and we can see these barriers here for the race cars. That's good. So they won't go flying. Looks like they're using those um, mini ladder pieces. Another shot of the rain truck. Looks nice. Yep. And again the tugboat. So we got a bit of space on the back there which we couldn't see in the initial picture. And looks like they've added a slight reflection to represent it floating on water. Interesting. I wonder if that does float. It probably wouldn't. But that'd be fun if it did. Okay, so we've got a flying red F1 car there. Someone's thrown that across the room, I guess, and took a quick picture. No, I'm just kidding. 
Um, yeah, it looks cool though. They've added a bit of like an action shot, I guess. Another action shot of the B model. And the C model once more. Yeah, I do like the look of these. Nothing too majorly outstanding. Using the lights at the top, that's nice. Okay, there's the back of the box with all three builds. And here's a real life example of someone putting it together. Bit of Lego art there. Cool, and there he has the build complete. And a nice little shot there on the low ground eye level. Brilliant, there's the B model and quite a few leftover pieces actually. Nice, I like that they've included that just so you can get an idea of how many pieces this secondary model uses. And that's it for the pictures. So those are my first impressions and some details about this set. I hope you have found them interesting. Let's build. Here is the complete build for set 3113, the race car transporter. And before I share my opinions, let's see what customers have said about this set online. As always, I target the 2, 3 and 4 star reviews of which are net incentivized where available to get what I hope are more balanced opinions and comments. Starting here with lego.com. This set averaged 4.9 out of 5, however that is only from 22 reviews, 
and only three of those 22 reviews were not incentivized. So I've had to settle for this short 5 star review from Ian Malcolm. Boy does he hate being right all the time. They said, Cool set, nice gift, very good. Only gripe is that the second set of ramps doesn't really fold down all the way, otherwise great set. So I can definitely agree with what they've said about this with the upper ramps on the trailer not folding down all the way. They are blocked off by those one by one bricks, but they do still function which is great nonetheless. Over to Amazon.co.uk, this set received an average of 4.7 out of 5 from over 2,300 ratings. I struggled to find many short and insightful reviews here, so this review by abgachecked.co or checked out.co, thanks Google, will suffice. This was written in German, so I'll hit the translate button, and they said more than 2.5 in one set which I think means more of a 2.5 in one set. Benefits, beautifully designed, well implemented, inexpensive, many alternative sets can be created. Disadvantages, more like 2.5 in one set. Conclusion, as so often the LEGO creator sets are very successful, here too the racing car transporter joins in a successful way, admittedly, the two alternative sets of crane truck and boat are significantly lower in complexity. Especially the boat is almost like half an alternative set. Nevertheless, the setup is fun and you pay significantly less than with the licensed model. For me, a successful set and therefore worth 4 stars. So yeah, I think that review was fair enough. The C model does look very small, which is a shame. I'm sure there are many ways that you could create many other builds with this set using only these pieces. So yeah, a shame on that one, but still it was good to have that mixture of boat, truck and the main build. Unfortunately, there is no official review on Brickset.com and I couldn't find much elsewhere. So those were a few web reviews from different perspectives that I found most interesting, over to my opinions. Here are my opinions of the race car transporter set 3113. In my reviews I may avoid detailing some of the glaringly obvious as I feel certain factors are likely to have been covered in many other review videos, articles and so on. So treat my reviews as a supplement to other reviews you may have seen already or are going to watch. Do note I still factor everything into my ratings but hopefully this video will give you a little extra to consider if you are thinking about purchasing this set. So, I will start with what I think are 3 pros and 3 cons. Then I will rate this set based on build experience, play experience and value for money. And finally, I will give my overall verdict. Starting with the pros and I must say my first one being... This set does have some interesting build techniques. So, in all 3 models especially too. So firstly, starting off with these uh, 1x4 wall element pieces. Um, it's a nice use of these to help stow the cars in the main build here. And the same two pieces are also used to secure the crane arm in the B model. So for this model, as you can see, the cars are locked into place there at the front and they're also held into place by these cheese slope pieces where the wheels lock in nicely. And finally, have these sort of ladder or fence pieces that just lock the cars in really securely. Okay, that one does like to travel a bit more than the top one. As, as you can see, it doesn't quite lock in at the top. 
yeah as you can see that doesn't quite lock in as much at the top as does the uh, blue car up on the upper deck so yeah got a little bit more movement there but I still think it's a nice build technique used there uh, we also have some nice sideways building techniques in each of the three models um, especially in this one I mean almost all of the way around we have nice details good sideways techniques um, it's got a really sleek modern feel to it you know it's not an old school lorry by any means and also do the race cars they look really really nice for the scale the sideways techniques here for the sides and literally just the two studs showing on these builds both of those are identical and of course I do like the modified 1x2 grill pieces I think those are great to add something a little more interesting and something that draws the attention to the front of the lorry and with the big windscreen just a really cool nice sleek looking design and on top of these build techniques I do like how good the trailer is uh, it's a really secure sturdy build it's not gonna come apart too easily thought there might have been a bit of weakness there but that's probably its strongest point uh, there is a 5x2 bracket brick in the heart of this um, and then of course we've got these little sideways uh, building modules here which try and demonstrate those hold that into place just there so yeah the two sideways bits there and right in the middle of there is that um, 5x2 bracket brick continue with the sideways theme uh, we've also got the 1x1 one one orange well trans orange stud piece there that represents a reflector on the trailer and a similar thing is done on the tugboat for detail uh, where we've got the 1x3 uh, tiles surrounding a single stud on the sides and lastly I do like the technique here where we've got these uh, 2x2 plate pieces with studs on the sides they're linked to some 1x2 plates with studs on the sides and it actually reorientates so that the build is then uh, got studs on the sides and then facing upwards once again so yeah really interesting use of those pieces there and in general throughout all three of the builds and my second pro has to be the variety of pieces um, in fact the variety of useful pieces in fact um, there's many jumper pieces um, and tiles in interesting colors so we've got some grays here greens of course the reds and blues so definitely good variety in that respect uh, there's various types of modified pieces with studs on their sides in brick form and tile form and the mixture of wheel pieces and tires which um, are all actually compatible on the same axle type piece so that's really good and obviously gives plenty of opportunity to be creative and utilize all of these pieces for your own builds and finally my third pro has to be the trailer play features so firstly with a bit of practice it links to the back of the lorry very well um, I found on occasions where the kingpin might end up staying in the back of the lorry but it's it's not too much of an issue I think it's pulling out at the wrong sort of angle leads you with the pin staying in the in the back of the lorry but otherwise that works really nicely 
and of course you've got all the way fantastic articulation there very good range enough to jackknife the lorry um yeah really nice with that we've also got some nice landing gear here so that i can't really demonstrate so well from this angle but i can assure you that lifts up enough of the trailer so that it's not scraping along the ground so i've got it with the landing gear applied at the moment and you can slide the lorry underneath mind you you do have to lift it slightly but you would have to sort of uh manipulate it anyway to of course lock it in like so and it's easy enough to stow away there nicely and it doesn't interfere with the look of the build so much blends in quite nicely also that is something i suppose that they could have easily gone without and wouldn't have been so much of an issue if it wasn't there so a nice little addition there and also i really like these loading ramps so they work very well um i did see some reviews stating that the top ramp doesn't go all the way down but as you can see it doesn't really interfere too much it still functions as it should but yeah as you can see here we've just got these uh, one by one bricks that that just block it off from going any further down but as previously mentioned those are required for the race cars to lock into place at both levels a pair up there and a pair down there and lastly as a small bonus i do like oh, those keep popping off i do like the um the hint of the red and blue electrical connectors here at the back of the lorry really nice little touch there so over to the cons and my first one being scratched bricks so I do expect some general wear and tear of course in Lego pieces but this is expected over a period of time but with this certain uh, play feature in particular the play feature causes the damage so in the B model on the crane truck the rotating mechanism for the crane causes some circular scratches in the 2x4 light bluish grey plates um, on one in particular but obviously if you're rebuilding that over time you might use the different plates and each of those will get scratched so this is caused by the anti-stud side of the bricks and I'll try and zoom in here on this brick but you, you probably can't make it out I mean for some it's probably fine and yeah i might be being a little over critical here but just don't like the fact that the bricks can get damaged and it's caused by the play feature instead of you know by say just the general storage my second con being the odd colors in the gaps so surprisingly the c model is actually the tightest model in my opinion there are a couple of medium azure bricks showing at the bottom but it's rarely noticeable since the way the set is designed to be and it sits on a flat surface anyway. The crane truck is the worst for this. As with this model for example and the crane truck, uh, this medium Azure 1x2 plate could have probably blended in better if it were black or white say. So it definitely does stand out there in my opinion and um, don't think it's specifically trying to represent anything my only guess is that it could have been put there in that color specifically to make it easier for the instructions to be followed uh, the same also goes for these dark turquoise one by two palisade bricks so just underneath there i'll just remove the whole cab just so it's a bit easier to see but it's, uh, it's this piece here that I'm talking about. 
uh, you can definitely see it on this build and on the, the crane truck too. So again, if that were say a white piece or a black piece, it probably would have just blended in a little nicer. And uh, I'm not sure if it is specifically meant to represent anything. My only imagination, could it be a sort of water tank of sorts or something inside there? Not entirely sure, but I doubt that is its purpose, but it definitely does stand out a little there, a little too much than it probably should. Also adding to that, so on the back of the truck, uh, it does feel incomplete in my opinion. As you can see here, got a few different colors there. It's almost like it's missing some level of neatness compared to the rest of the truck. So it looks great at every angle almost until you come right round the back and then you sort of lose that level of cleanness. So I like the, the light back there, that's nice. And of course what I mentioned earlier with the connectors, but all around here, all the different colours sort of standing out a little oddly. Of course once the trailer's on there, you're probably more focused on the trailer and on the cars that are on the trailer. But definitely would have been nice to have a complete 360 clean look on there. And finally my last con would be these builds are difficult to dismantle and I really do feel that this set would have benefited from one of these, the brick separator. So yeah, do really wish this piece was included in the set. Obviously I've got one or I've got a few but if you're you know fairly new to Lego or um, haven't got a lot of sets you might not have one of these pieces um, so for example over here if I just remove a few pieces and what we end up with is say like this sort of situation where we've got a 1x2 grill piece and there's not a lot of surface area to get under that piece so you really do benefit from having a brick separator that can definitely get under those so you know if you're someone who hasn't got long nails for example um, and you can't get under that then you'll struggle to get this piece off without something like a brick separator and the same sort of situation or similar situation is on the alternative builds too where we have various tile pieces or jumper plates attached in a similar way um, where they're on a, a larger plate and yet yeah, really difficult to get under. There is also a part on the tugboat where these pieces are used along with these this is a spare one that i've got here all of the ones are currently attached there but yeah these two pieces are actually joined together like this and so it's really difficult to separate those two once they're attached to each other and you actually put these together twice like this uh, you'll see it on the front of the tugboat so you can sort of just about get a nail under there but again it's very difficult and would benefit from having the brick separator much easier that way so yeah it does take away from i suppose the build experience more than anything and before i move on here's a quick demo of the b and c models Here is the crane truck, the B model from set 3113. As you can see, we have some yellow embellishments all the way around the vehicle. The crane arm is secured into place well, as mentioned before. The locking hinge plates allow for the crane arm to hold its position well. 
and the crane arm can rotate a full 360 degrees when lifted. It uses the same principle as the trailer connection in the main build. However, as mentioned, the 2x4 light bluish grey plates can easily be scratched due to the sharp corners of the underside of the plates above. A small side build is included of some blue materials to lift and lower. And one more thing I like about this with the side build is that it lines up just right when attached to the crane arm so that it doesn't drag along the floor if you're transporting the materials or goods. And here we are left with a fair few spare pieces. So along with the spare pieces, I was also able to make a couple of hot rods here. And this one in particular can also turn into a flying hot rod. So just a bit of additional creativity there. And of course, Still plenty of spare pieces. So here is the C model, the tugboat, and yeah, it was a lot more interesting build than I thought it was going to be to be fair. You got some good sideways building techniques across the sides and I like how it's very very smooth to be fair. Uh, we've got one single stud on either side just to add a slight bit of detail there and yeah very straightforward for the base. A little bit interesting with this part of the ship here which is held on by four studs just below there and you end up using these modified bricks with the studs on the sides to build up this part and yeah it was really interesting to put together to be fair so the designer had to be really creative to get all of that to fall into place so quite impressed Although quite a small build to be fair, there are many many leftover pieces which I'll show you in just a moment. A tiny bit of a play feature just here. Not too much going on, but enough for the child to be creative with. And I'm surprisingly more pleased with it than I thought I would be. Yeah. Interesting little build, not utilising too many pieces, but just about a worthy C model to be fair. Here are the leftover pieces for the C model. As you can see, not a whole lot of pieces were used, plenty plenty of spares, all the tyres and things like that, so plenty of opportunity to use those for some more extra creative builds. And once again, with the spare pieces from this model, I was able to get a little creative and come up with a couple of little builds here. Again, with Still many spare pieces left over. So the one I'm most proud of is this little sort of hot rod. Big wheels at the back, small wheels at the front, little bit of sideways building techniques and it's even got a steering wheel inside there for a bit of detail. Left hand drive of course as it's a classic American hot rod. 
been modified. We've got a bit of flames coming out of the back there and a front splitter and rear spoiler. And we even got a little sort of um, visor over the windscreen there. And don't ask me what creature this is, but it's supposed to be some sort of creature. Just again, happy to use a bit of sideways building. And finally, really pushing the boat out here, I've made a helicopter. If you couldn't tell what that was supposed to be already. So yeah, plenty of fun to be fair in this set. Really pleased. Back to the main build. So how would I rate this set? Well, for the play experience, I would give this set a 5 out of 5. I'm very impressed. You get 3 surprisingly good builds here, boosting my marks for the play experience. The main build of 2 cars, a lorry and a trailer is enough to create a mini race day. When you're done with that, build the B model, a functional crane truck to transport the materials and goods. If you're still not satisfied, build and play with the mini tugboat. And finally, use the spare pieces from the alternative builds or all of the pieces to get creative and build whatever you like. And at this scale, I think there is enough here for a great play experience. For the build experience, I give this set a 3 out of 5, so there is plenty of build time. I found the sideways building techniques to achieve interesting shapes fascinating and felt there was good utilisation of the pieces in the alternative models. In particular, the pieces with studs on the sides. However, I feel the build experience is blemished due to the exclusion of a brick separator, making dismantling each of the builds a little more strenuous than it should have been. So the main build took me 40 minutes to build and that was while taking my time. In bag 1 you start building the blue race car, then the lorry. In the second bag you put together the trailer and finish building an identical red race car. The B model took me 35 minutes to construct, again taking my time. The crane truck itself is built in four modules. You start with the base, then you build the main cab, which the designer had to get creative by, fa by facing multiple bricks with studs on the sides inwards. Then you build the main cab, which the designer had to get creative by facing multiple bricks with studs on the sides inwards. After that, you build the crane cab and finally the crane arm. And not forgetting, there is also a small side build of some sort of goods to lift and transport. The C model took me under 25 minutes to build. It was a symmetrical build and I found the bow and the cabins the most interesting parts of this model. And for value for money, this set gets a 3 out of 5. I think this set is good value for the amount of build time and play time combined. And there is a good variety of pieces to continue your fun and be creative by building your own creations. This set retailed for £21.99 here in the UK. It contains 328 pieces, so that's 6.7 pence per piece. In the States, this set retailed for $19.99, which works out as 6.1 cents per piece. According to BrickInsights.com, for LEGO Creator sets, the average price per piece is $0.09 cents, and the average price per minifig is $26.65. This set has no minifigs and is well below the average for price per piece, although the majority of these pieces are smaller than, say, 2x2 brick pieces. So I have taken that into consideration too with my rating. And overall, this set gets a 3.6 out of 5 from me. The LEGO Creator 3-in-1 race car transporter is a fun set with plenty of build and playtime. There are many useful pieces such as the ones with studs on the sides, 
And I like these unique green car grill pieces here. The main build is almost always my favourite in these types of sets and it certainly is my favourite here out of the three models. It's an interesting scale and only has a few studs on show at first glance, you can almost mistake it for not being Lego at all. And since this set has been retired, if you can pick it up on the second hand market for a fair price I'd say go for it. And before I go, here are the spare pieces. Here's a quick glance at the last few pages of the instruction manual. As you can see, there are a few other 3-in-1 sets here. And finally, the piece count. Thanks for watching my build and review video. If you enjoy my content, please like, comment and subscribe. I would really appreciate your feedback so I can continue to improve the quality of my content. This has been Chill Game Build. Stay tuned for the next one. Over and out. Peace.